That's the spookiest thing I've ever seen. I don't know if I'm dreaming right now. In episode one, Perifractic cracked a 52-year-old mystery, locating the exact crash site of the infamous dual truck. They braved a totally unprepared journey through the untamed American outback, all in hopes of unearthing a relic of the cinematic past, and we left them on a literal cliffhanger at the bottom of that cliff. What's that? Now brace yourselves as we dive back into the enigma. Is that the long-lost dual truck we've found? And could the killer driver still lurk within, ready to claim two final victims? Retro Recipes, a pixelated flight into the nostalgic world of a man whose tech no longer exists. Perifractic, a grown-up young loner on a crusade to champion the cause of innocent childhood nostalgia. The curious, the powerless, in a world of distracting peripherals that operate above old school law. Don't get jealous of that truck, okay, buddy? Well, I am not at the bottom of a cliff. From that studio back to the location for Universal Studios Duel. And actually, wouldn't that intro about the ghost of the truck driver taking his revenge on a few movie buffs who came to find the wreckage make an amazing found footage horror movie? Blumhouse, if you're watching, drop us a line. But first, let's discover if that is even the Duel truck and whether our hapless duo survived or if this video is that found footage. What is that down there then? Is that the hood? Let's go. I've got that splinters and... Yeah. I don't, know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Is that dangerous to get down there? Might be dangerous How to get, get down back there. up. We'd have to get back out that way if we can. Wait, 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 wait. Just hold on. That's been there. How likely is it that was been there 50 years? Spielberg's first movie, and nobody's gone and retrieved it. And we're the first. I think we know why no one's gone and <laughs> retrieved it. It's okay, we've got hours of daylight left, and maybe what, 10, 15 minutes to get to there at the most? Maybe five. It's gonna be a bit of a slide. I really feel like I'm dreaming. Hold on. Oh boy. But that's clearly an oil drum. So people have done it's stuff down It's a massive downing. oil drum. Thing. Wait, what's the thing below it then? Wasn't that on the side of the truck? It, 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 yeah. We'll just try and do it. We got to try and do it. That's got to be someone else's truck. It can't be the truck. No, that could be the cab. This is the cliff. And there is a truck here. Yeah. <laughs> what are the odds? Um, what's the best way? It's, it's going to be low and slidey. Well, you're good at sliding on your butt. <laughs> So show me how you do it. Steven tumbles down the cliff and smacks into Spielberg's truck. He's going, he's going. He is keen. Dude, there's metal and a wheel. What? Metal and a wheel. <laughs> I've touched it. I was the first to touch it. Find us keepers. This is, ridiculous. this is a car wheel. Dean, we're never going to get back up here. We call you Dean Keen. We need to match this wheel. Oh sh! To right. the Plymouth wheel. Plymouth Valiant wheel. This that could be a Plymouth, Plymouth Valiant, Valiant yeah. wheel. This is unreal. Careful. Hold on, I've got to bend it. Got to touch it. I touched it second. It's cool for a beer. <laughs> Wheel. Dude, we did it. We got here and there's stuff here. Dude, that can't be the wheel from the car. Of course it can. The hero car. Of course it can. If it had broken off, it might have a little axle with it. But all the nuts are gone. Yeah, unless it's a spare wheel. Could be. The trunk was open, but they opened the trunk and set fire to it. 
That's the freaking from the movie Duel. Well, look at the size of the arch. Huge. That yeah. is truck, not car. That is huge. Yep. It's solidified as well. It's a fossilized tire. That looks like a car part to me. It, it's could that be the AC? Uh, that could yes, be. that's the goes out the spot into the cabin. Well, what's this? That like a resistor? No, that's a power transformer. Battery terminal. All this talk of transformers makes one think of another type of truck. But the talk of resistors makes me think of PCB Way, where you can get great PCBs for your killer truck from just five bucks. They even have dedicated automotive and other sections. But what does PCB stand for? We'll find out in a few minutes. Oh, this is heavy. This is heavier it's than heavy, it Marty. That looks like the rack that was they were mounted. Where's, we've where's the cabin? Be, we've got to be level with the cabin, but on the wrong side, there's another oil drum. This is and crazy. a tire. Here's the cabin yeah, over here. A tire. Let's finish this road. Dude. The shoe. Oh, f. <laughs> oh, f. I mean, if you will spend $8 on shoes, what's it say on the tire? It's very old. Look, Firestone. Very old Firestone brand. Firestone. Um, that metal box. On my way. Let's go to the cabin. Come oh, on. Here. Wheel. Huh? Wheel, glass, seat spring. Spring. Look. It's all seat spring stuff. I'm going to the cabin. I'm going down here. <laughs> the excitement is powerful. Ow. Ah. Okay. Oh, sh that's really a cabin. So join us next month for episode three. When <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just be careful, okay? Mm. Oh my god. Oh. This is spooky. What if there's a driver in there? Spookiest thing I've ever seen. This is it. This is it. This is a split screen. <laughs> That's the split screen. Do you think this is really good? Give me the split screen. High five. We earned that. It's not an oil drum. It's too big. It's like a water butt or something. But what about this? This rusty thing below them. Up. You see it? Yeah. What's that? Well, this big thing here, yeah. We have a lot of bees. They might be flies. No, that's a bee. Do you recognize this? Inside. Just be right. careful of those bees, don't agitate them. That's a hive, so I'm going away. Yeah, there's a lot of bees there. It's probably not going up that way. Whoa. Wow. I had to take this video. Can I do you windscreen? Say hello, Dean. Hello, Dean. Idiot. Dude, you're sitting in the truck. But this may Ow. not be it. We don't know. Of course it is. And so with optimism running high, there's still a whole other cliff base that I wanted to search, but concerns growing about bees and snakes and losing the light, not to mention the skin, we decided not to venture any further. And after a three hour hike, we are back. Civilization. Can't believe we did it, seriously. I can't believe we did it. I can't believe we're still alive. And we found not a bolt or a little paperclip sized thing, but what could be a whole flipping truck.
and it could be a Plymouth Valiant wheel. We started in the booth from the diner from Duel. We ended up sitting in a truck cab with a split screen. And at the bottom of that cliff and nowhere else. I mean, if that's just a coincidence, that is the coincidence to end all coincidences. I think so. What a day. What a day. But we can't leave it there. So the next step is to research and confirm our findings. And for that, I've excitedly emailed the land managers who had worked on the actual 1971 dual shoot. And they just replied confirming this. There is no wreckage from Duel there. The truck was not thrown off the tall cliff. It was sent over a much shorter cliff. It didn't have to be winched up, as the access to the bottom is vehicle accessible. The wreckage you are seeing is from another feature film that was shot 30 years before Duel. Please stop emailing me. Whew, there's a lot to unpack there. For one thing, why does he sound like me? But let's start with the important things. He says the truck isn't there anymore. And having done literally minutes of research, I can confirm that unfortunately I think he's right. That is the that is coincidence, coincidence to end all coincidences. coincidences. You see, I found these comments on something called YouTube by someone called Bruce. And Bruce had this to say. The original truck started out life as a Union 76 transport. I worked for the owner of the tanker, Jan <coughs> Dan Jackson of B&J Transportation, who hauled gasoline for Union. I unloaded it at Universal Studios once when Spielberg was hunting for a truck. They liked it and bought it. It was a wore out old dog by then. After the shoot, I saw its remains when the junk was hauled back to our yard in Carson, California. The motor was salvaged, the transmission, the rest was sold for scrap iron. Nothing of value. Now I beg to differ about the value, but he is entirely convincing and he gets into a lot of conversations with people there in the comments. But it does at least reveal that the motor lives on. Perhaps you're driving a truck with a replacement motor that is actually the one from Duel. Good luck to you. It's also possible that some of us have drunk soda or something out of a can made from the recycled iron. Which means the Duel truck lives on in our souls. In, our, in the souls of us. And before you comment, yes, iron is used to make soda cans. But let's forget all that and deal just with our footage. And as you can see, the top of the cab is quite rounded there. But having gone home and studied the footage, the actual dual truck's top is not. And then there's also this back window in the cab we found, which doesn't resemble the back of the dual cab either. Now the plot thickens because we did also find the back of this cab but unfortunately, I also don't think that's it. There are several details that just aren't quite right. The beveling around that cut out at the back, for example. But Demifractic's research has shown that we could have actually been sitting in an Ario Speedwagon cab. If you know one that went off a familiar looking cliff in the 1940s, let us know, because whether it's from Duel or not, this truck is still part of movie history. Next up, they claim there was a road for easy wreckage recovery. But guys, I've proven this is the Cliff of Destiny, not the one they told us about in episode one. And trust me, no truck is rolling out of our cliff without a little pick-me-up from above. But our friends said it was not winched up. So just for completeness, and so we can iron out all of the history of this thing, as a final sprinkle of evidence, feast your eyes on this behind-the-scenes gem. See that crane and hook chilling on the right? Case closed, my friends. The truck was winched back up the cliff that I identified, only to be sold as Hollywood's most dramatic scrap metal. And I then realized you can actually see it in the back of one of the shots. There's the base of it there. And if I composite both photos together, you kind of get an idea of what it looked like. And my guess is that it was winched up by this 1971 PH 430-80C-8X4 crane truck. You can even see that the winchy thing is almost identical to the winchy thing on the craney thing. Hopefully now, with all that evidence finally put out there, you'll all stop emailing that poor guy, let him off the hook, and give him some peace. In fact, I'll just drop him an email to let... No, nah, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. Now, don't feel disheartened because we have got two potentially amazing bits of news. Before that, you might remember Deanie Fractic saying this. Yeah, if that's if not that's the cab of the, the truck... truck. I'll eat, I'll eat it. it. <laughs> and because I know you guys and will get complaints if he doesn't eat it, here's him eating it. I know what I've got to do. And as we all know, PCB stands for Pretty Crappy Breakfast. At least it's high in iron. Okay, well now for the potentially good news. First, remember this piece of very hardy chrome that we found downstream of the cliff in episode one? 
Bitcoin duel, Dennis Weaver's character of course drives a 1971 Plymouth Valiant, and a couple of you identified the chrome part as the turn signal assembly for a 1970s Plymouth. But not a Plymouth Valiant, a Plymouth Roadrunner. Hmm, well, here's where things get potentially really fun. There's only one record of a Roadrunner ever going off a TV cliff, and it was Daisy Duke's Roadrunner. Yes, that Daisy Duke from the Dukes of Hazard. I used to watch that show all the time as a kid. Not sure why, really. Now, we know they filmed in LA, and it does look a lot like the Dual Cliffs, a go-to location for this kind of thing. Now, I could only find one reference for the purported filming location, and it's actually a few miles away. But when you go to that exact location, although the cliff nearby looks correct from overhead, and so I could see why someone might think it was the one, when you examine the topography, it's actually quite slanted and not that straight drop as we see in the show. And the same goes for all the possible cliffs nearby. So I don't see how it was filmed there. But all I can say for sure is we're told there is part of a roadrunner at our cliff. We held it, so there's a chance it could be part of Daisy Duke's actual hero car. But back in our hero car, Katesla, we thought we'd research that wheel that we found to see if it might have come from the Plymouth Valiant in Duel. We found a Plymouth Valiant 1969. Okay, let me get my picture of it up. Okay, don't get too excited, but this is a 69 Valiant, okay? Okay, I'm opening it now. <laughs> wait, wait, count the, count the holes in the middle. One, one, two, two three, three, four, four five. five. Count the holes around the outside. One, one two, two, three, three four. Dude. Seven, eight. That's Dennis ten. Weaver's wheel. They actually touched the wheel from Duel. <laughs> it's Weaver's wheel. <laughs> it's really true. <laughs> I really don't believe it. That can't, that can't be Weaver's wheel. We've got a rusty version of a 69 Valiant wheel. This was really worth it. <laughs> it really was. Now, according to my research, that Mopar Rally wheel was indeed available on A, B and E body Chrysler's Dodges and Plymouths. They were all manufactured by Chrysler, including the 1971 Plymouth Valiant. But it doesn't seem to match the wheels we see on the car, although some of them are hidden by hubcaps, but I don't think you hide this kind of wheel under a hubcap. Though in some of these frames, that kind of does look like it. You can clearly see the five bolt pattern. Maybe the wheel was sprayed black by production, but our wheel has no bolts. Now either they've rusted away, or it was not actually attached, and therefore we're screen matching to the wrong thing anyway. So could it have been a production spare wheel kept in that open boot of the Valiant, and when the car finally hit the ground, it was thrown clear and rolled away to where we found it, safe from the winch that hauled the rest of the car back up, wheels and all. Indeed, in this recent scale model reconstruction of the dual crash conducted by Movies Miniatures FX, you can see parts that are flung way further than expected, hitting the crew, so I bet things like this were left behind. But even if you don't think it's Weaver's wheel, I think I know whose it could be. Daisy Duke's Roadrunner. It's a tantalizing thought, isn't it? So now we've come full circle, literally, as a wheel. And I hope that despite any disappointment you may share with us about the truck, that you're able to at least agree that it's kind of incredible that we started this adventure with such slim hopes. We're hoping, We're to, hoping to, find to find a little, a little bolt. bolt. Can you imagine? Anything small. Yet it's possible that instead we found actual parts from either the Hero Car in Duel or Dukes of Hazard, a sort of duel of the hazards. But even with those potential wins, there is one lingering thought that I just can't shake. I feel like up there, amongst the buzz of bees and the rattle of snakes, there's something still waiting to be discovered. These two pieces that go flying off to the side, for example, are you really telling me that they went to the trouble of retrieving, then separately winching those back up so as to leave the land spotless, when all that other vehicle junk had been left there since the 1940s with no problem? Come on, I can guarantee there's still something from the dual truck right there. But now, thanks to our imagery, we know where to look. I've even been able to screen match the location from multiple angles now to pinpoint exactly where the truck landed. However, in those final communications with the folks managing the land, they've pretty much said to me, please don't come back. 
fails to send a message to the actual cliff owners, Pardi Group, but so far just CB radio silence. So if you're watching this and you have the keys to the land, or you're an Indiana Jones of the archaeology world, ready to unearth some dual history, or you're even Steven Spielberg, swing by perifractic.com slash dual. Reach out there and let's turn the final page on this cliffhanger for once and for all. But you know, even if we find nothing, it's important to remember that in life, it's always about the journey, not the destination. Well, unless you're the truck driver, then it was about the destination. And what a journey it was. Thank you so much for joining us on it. And as for a possible part three, subscribe and support below. You never know. And cheerio. Wonder what that'll do to the wax job. One man can make a difference, Perry. Or one woman. Or dog. The Fractics. Lone curators in a vintage world. The world of retro recipes. I think we've reached the end of the road.